Thursday, March 12th, Korean-American filmmaker Benson Lee screened his film Soul Searching in San Francisco's Castro Theater. Soul Searching is based on his experiences as a diasporic Korean teen at a South Korean summer camp in the 1980s set up by the Korean government in attempts to reconnect to those of Korean ancestry to their roots. Of course, the summer was less about connecting to their culture and more about parties, girls, and building experiences to last a lifetime. This movie took 16 years to make and has premiered in Northern California on the opening day of Camp Fest, the largest Asian American film festival in North America, and was received with brave reviews to sold out audiences. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. So, can you tell our viewers a bit about your movie? Yeah, so uh, Soul Searching is a uh, 80s teen comedy uh, uh, based on a personal experience of mine when my parents sent me to Korea in the summer of 1986 so that um, I could reconnect with my heritage. But of course, you know, um, when you get about 200 uh, teenagers together, the last thing on their mind is their heritage. <laughs> but we had a great time that summer. We got to meet Koreans from all around the world and uh, we learned about the world as well as uh, we came of age. And uh, it was one of the best summers of my life, so I've made a, a feature film about that. Your movie was filmed in Korea. Can you tell us what it was like to film there? Yeah, it was amazing. Um, we were very lucky. We got help from the Korean government through the Korean Film Commission to make the movie. Um, the crews in Korea, like the Korean crews are amazing. They work extremely hard. And uh, I, got, I was very fortunate to work with some of the best Korean crews from that country who worked on many Korean movies that probably a lot of you guys have seen. So it was amazing. But it was also hard because, you know, I'm not fluent in Korean. And, you know, as a director, you have to be able to communicate with your cast and crew uh, fluently. But I worked with a lot of translators. So, you know, it was it, that, that part was a hard part. But outside of that, it was an amazing experience. All right, awesome. Uh, on the topic of cast, mm -hmm. can you tell us how you cast your movie and how your actors brought your characters to life? Yeah, so we worked, um, there were certain actors that we wanted, like Justin Chan. So we were, you know, uh, uh, I was able to work with his manager and get him on uh, board. And then um, in terms of finding other actors, I mean, we had a very large ensemble cast. So I had to find lots of actors. And the truth is, there's not a lot of Asian American actors out there uh, compared to other groups. So we decided to go onto Facebook and uh, do an online casting campaign where, uh, you know, for me personally, I love working with non-actors. I think there's a lot of talent out there that's just waiting to be discovered. And so we, you know, we put the dialogue out, uh, made the dialogue available, the character synopsis, and I allowed anyone to, you know, memorize and audition, like videotape themselves audition and submit it to our Facebook page. And from there I was able to um, find the best candidates and then call them in for an in-person audition. And basically I found about three or four actors that way that, that are really important characters in the movie. So we were very lucky uh, to have taken that approach. Otherwise I might not have found these actors who were actually really perfect for their roles. You said this movie took you 16 years to make. Mm -hmm. Did you have problems finding distribution as an Asian American director? Yeah, I mean, we, we've, it's not easy, um, especially when you have an, uh, an Asian American cast. I mean, it would have been easier if like Jake Gyllenhaal was in our movie, but um, it's tough. And it's not just for Asian Americans, it's for all, all uh, ethnic films. Um, but we had offers, we just we didn't like them. And basically, uh, I don't think no one's gonna give our movie the same kind of love that we're gonna give it. So, and we just know that the audiences love it. I mean, at CamFest, we had a standing ovation of over a thousand people, which is a testament, I think, to um, how much the audience, that there is an audience for this movie. Um, at Sundance, we had standing ovations. So, we want to handle it on our own. We want to actually change or re redefine the distribution model a little bit, because normally it's just like you go release the movie and then that's it. We want to actually go on tour with our movie, kind of like a rock band. <laughs> but uh, we want to take our cast and we want to actually have events and we want to bring the community together. And, uh, you know, so it's more than just a screening, but you get to meet us and we get to meet our audience, which is great. So that's what we intend to do all summer. And so we, we will be back in the Bay Area at, uh, this summer to show the movie to, uh, you know, a bigger audience. I think that's fantastic that you're taking the lead in this. Thank you. Um, so this movie was based off your own experiences as a teen. Mm -hmm. How did that differ from what was portrayed on screen? 
Um, well, yeah, it's inspired by what I went through. There's a lot of stuff that wasn't that didn't happen, and there's a lot of stuff that we had to compact into you know just an hour and a hour and forty. But um, it's I would say it's heavily inspired by the, by my experience and my friends. So f there's a few characters in the movie that um, actually existed, yeah. who I'm still friends with today, and um, there's some characters that didn't exist and that we created because we felt that we needed that type of character to complete the the story. So, yeah, it's very much inspired by what, what I went through. All right, so do you have any final words for our viewers that might want to become filmmakers in the future? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, filmmaking is uh, one of the most important qualities about being a filmmaker is you have to be a really good collaborator and a director, which doesn't always mean that you know, you have to know everything, but you have to be open-minded and willing to work with people. Um, nowadays, you know, I didn't have the same kind of technology that's available now. That um, when I was when I was a film student, and I think you should just go out there and make as much as you can and edit as much as you can on your own. Because uh, I mean, you should collaborate with other people. But if you don't have those resources, then you can just go out there and do it on your own. And uh, people should just practice as much as they can while they have all this tech, like technology at their disposal because it's just amazing. I know a friend of mine uh, who had a movie at Sundance um, that got picked up by a distributor uh, made his movie with his iPhone. So, yeah, it's all about you know uh, developing your craft as a filmmaker. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I'm here with Benson Lee, director of Soul Searching at Zinc Details. I'm Gemma for K-Pop TV.